Hey, good afternoon, more Medic One. Uh, today, I've got a uh, little hedge trimmer on the bench. This is a steel. Uh, different models are different uh, ways that you take off the blades. Sometimes you have to disassemble the gearboxes. I'm not going to go into that because every one's different. Uh, some models you can't take it apart. Uh, you have to sharpen them on. But uh, we've got the blades off right here. And uh, we're going to sharpen the blades and we're going to put it back together. And uh, bear with me and let me get some tools to do it and we'll see how it turns out. <clears throat> I like to use uh, a rotary angle die grinder with these little roll lock discs. Uh, if you go to auto parts store, places like that, these can get expensive. I buy these on uh, eBay from Keen Store, Keen Abrasives, called Keen Store or something like that. And uh, I can get a whole package of a hundred of them for like, oh, it's like, oh, I can't remember exactly how much they cost, but it ended up costing me about 25 or 30 cents a piece uh, compared to a, like almost $2 a piece off the snap-on truck or uh, oh, across the street at the O'Reilly's or AutoZone, place like that. But uh, let me show you how it goes here and uh, we'll put one on and we'll start sharpening. Basically what you want to do I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, there's two sides to this that you have to sharpen. You want to sharpen the back side first. Basically what you want to do, well there's a bottom and a top, depending on what kind of blade you've got. Uh, you have double sided or single sided uh, blades. Uh, the length of them can be anywhere between, you know, they make short 18 inch jobs up to 40 inch hedge trimmers. Uh, this angle right here, what you want to do, you just want to keep that same angle and you want to turn your tool on to just knock, you, you're not really sharpening them, you're just knocking the, the burrs off. But uh, you just go down each one. Every now and then you'll come across one that's got uh, oh, a gouge in it from hitting a chain link fence or something and you may have to work that one just a little bit more. But you get the general idea. So when you get one side done, just flip it. And you can do the same thing on this side. Some people use this kind of tool to do it with. Uh, you can use a Dremel. Uh, this seems to be the most cost effective, easiest way to, to do it, in my opinion. Now, I'm not going to do all of these, but uh, once you get the actual edge, you want to flip it over and just knock the burrs off the back side. You don't want to take a whole lot of meat off right here because this is where the blades actually uh, clamshell together. When you get that edge there and then this back side that should be just as razor sharp as you want to ever get. But uh, if you get them too sharp, they'll just dull. Uh, they come pretty much uh, dull from the factory if you want to call it dull. But uh, once you get this angle, if I can do it without it being too blurry, uh, once you get this angle right here, uh, where it's supposed to be, you want to keep this same angle. You don't want to change that angle. But when you flip it over and you knock in burrs off, it's just going to be just as sharp as it was from the factory right here. But uh, let me get all these done and uh, show you how it looks. And uh, we'll put it back on the machine. Uh, there's a trick that I want to show you on the, uh, the gearbox. 
uh, to time it in case you get it off time but uh, the connecting rod that actuates this blade back and forth you gotta be real careful uh, some of them have caged needle needle rollers some don't uh, this one happens to be caged needle rollers so I like to pack that bearing in there full of grease just to keep them from falling out but anyway let me get this done and uh, we'll see how it looks here in just a few minutes and uh, we'll get it put back together once you get it done it should look something like this it should look brand new uh, basically like I say just to recap uh, you just want to go down each and every one of your cutters uh, and just keep that same angle and then flip it over and just lightly basically all you're doing is just cleaning the sap off the back side uh, you don't want to take any metal off here but uh, that's just as sharp as it's going to get right there bud but uh, we'll put it back together here and uh, I'll show you how to time the blades and uh, we'll crank it up and, and lubricate them and uh, should be good to go. When you go back with your blades uh, you have a camshaft per se just like on the inside of an engine you have the top uh, lobe and you have the base of the circle. Uh, what you want to do, it doesn't matter where this is as you can see how that's operating that lower connecting rod you don't have to take that one out to do this but uh, what you want to do is just rotate this thing around to where it's either top dead center like that or bottom dead center which is I like to do it right there because this connecting rod is sticking out there so I can get my blade in there but uh, there's no timing mark so you just have to eyeball this thing and you may have to take this thing back apart after you're done uh, I get there's about one or two teeth see how I can move the gear and it not move the uh, connecting rod but just line I, I just line up that dot you know just make everything perpendicular best you can but uh, that's about as good as you're gonna get right there there and then uh, take your blade it's gonna have a little tit on it little tab and it's just going to go right down there in that connecting rod just kind of line everything up just ever so little take your next one and you're going to flip it upside down so that the the two metal pieces or the two uh, shiny metal uh, parts that you just did are facing each other like that ain't that pretty but anyway uh, you, next you want to pull this one down since this is going to be the one that's like that and you want to not you want it to where you don't see it like that you want it to be flat across there this is how I time it this is going to be almost impossible to do one handed but uh, take your other connecting rod and be careful not to lose the needle rollers and just stick it right back on here and you, you may have to move this back and forth to get it but uh, let me get that on there and I'll show you here in just a minute when you get your top connecting rod in uh, you can take and spin this right here and what you want to do you want the cutters to disappear like that and that's right at bottom dead center let's turn it over to top dead center right there and your cutter should just all but disappear so let me show you what happens when it's out of time and you don't want this yeah you know what you can't get this one out of time because this is a single gear the echoes have some of them have two gears and you can get those out of time it doesn't matter where this is it could, it could be here it could be here just as long as you got the connecting rod hooked to your blades it's going to be in time because it's, it's one gear uh, in my mind I was thinking echo echoes or can, can be a pain in the butt to uh, the time 
but it's the same principle. You want one gear facing one way, and one facing 100 and, or yeah, 80, 180, yeah, 180 to 100, exactly 180 degrees out of each other. But uh, let me get the top cover put back on it, and we're going to shoot this puppy full of grease, and uh, we'll get it put back together, and we'll get it cranked up and running here in just a minute. When you go to re-grease the gearbox, you want to take this plug out right here. It's a T27. And you want to use the white grease from steel. Uh, it's got a, the cap is, or the, uh, the neck on the bottle of grease is actually threaded. You can just screw it right down in here. And uh, whenever you buy the grease, it comes with a toothpaste squeezer. Whoopsie. Guess I didn't get it down in there good enough. But uh, you don't want to fill this thing just so full that it, it uh, comes out everywhere. Just get it in there enough. Now grease will probably puke out of here for a while until it gets evenly dispersed out through the gearbox. That should be plenty. That was about a quarter of that tube. If you put it in there, then it starts coming right back out the hole, you put way too much. But uh, Put your cap back on. Tighten it. Let's crank it up. If you have any questions about uh, steel hedge trimmers or echo hedge trimmers, Red Max, anything like that, let me know. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Have a good day.